Oh, hi everyone. It's Susie Crypto Granny here. I'm sorry I missed your podcast for yesterday. Much apologies. I just got way too busy with all my clients. So um, I'm getting to the stage where I can't accept new clients because I'm just so busy at the moment. But um, thank you so much for everyone for supporting me. I really do appreciate that. Now, there's so much to talk about today. It is just not funny. I don't even know where to start here. Seriously, do I you know, talk about the news from yesterday or today or, or what. But I guess the first thing I'll have to mention today is Coinbase. They're going to list on the NASDAQ. Um, <clears throat> I think they're opening, gosh, I don't know what time it is in America. That's the only problem in New York or somewhere. But uh, this is, um, it's 14.05 here in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. And the weather's not that bad today, which is great. <laughs> Um, but, um, so I don't know what time the American market opens, but I'm, I'm keeping a really close eye on it, um, at the moment. And Coinbase is on the CFD market at $250 at the moment. So I'm keeping a really close eye on that. Uh, I'm really interested in where this thing's going to trade today, particularly on the, on the NASDAQ, the equity market, because it's, you know, I'm, I've got Binance positions, obviously in the cryptocurrency market, and I love Binance. And Binance is like, Honestly, about five times bigger than Coinbase. Uh, Binance does 70% of all the volume in the crypto market and more. It's not just an exchange um, that does all the volume. They do staking. Uh, they have other businesses. They have futures, derivatives, options, all that sort of thing. Also, they take investments directly uh, from from you know other cryptocurrency uh, uh, products and projects and that sort of thing and also they take investments in the tokens and the coins so but not only that the other day in exchange another exchange went on Binance's smart chain so Binance themselves are in direct competition with Ethereum so Binance are just incredible and I, this is uh, today really important because you know, you can, if Coinbase is up like, you know, from 250 to, to 500 bucks, well, you know that Binance should, should be much higher than $500. And I, as you know, I've got a evaluation at 1225 for Binance. And I actually believe it'll go higher than that. So, because Binance are just a mega, you know, mega, mega. Seriously, they're just so clever. So, very quickly, yesterday, um, Binance, they tokenized um, Tesla uh, on their exchange. And that's the first tokenized trading equity on their exchange. And they also tokenized a, a Germany company um, for some reason, uh, which, is, which is sort of strange. And I thought, what's going on here? Because why are they tokenizing some German company that you know, no one sort of knows about? And um, so I'm going to keep a close eye on that German company just to, to see what's going on there. So, yeah, something's up there, I reckon. But anyway, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was just one thing that caught my interest, I have to say, uh, for sure. And um, But there was another story from yesterday which was really important. And this was about the Ripple executives. And they uh, actually put a, a, an order to dismiss the SEC's lawsuit uh, against them, uh, and also they also uh, put uh, a, they filed to dismiss um, the fact that the SEC had asked them personally, uh, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson for their eight year of their financials, and uh, luckily for the Ripple executives, U.S. Magistrate Judge Sarah Netburn rejected the SEC's demand demands for eight years of Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson's personal financial information. And she said that was not relevant to the SEC ruling in terms of selling unregistered securities, which I thought was great, okay? Uh, even though there was no formal announcement of how to regulate this technology in between time, so I thought that was absolutely fantastic. I mean, clearly, um, you know, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson's, um, you know, uh, solicitors or lawyers, whatever they call them over there, you know, they, they're just so clever, honestly. And then they also, uh, interesting enough, filed, filed two motions back to the SEC. And so, like, they've, you know, hit them, you know, literally at the bow of the ship. 
And the motions they filed back was the SEC uh, used unorthodox, um, had the, you know, used the unorthodox move to name two high-profile executives as defendants for allegedly aiding and abetting the company's unregistered sales of the XRP cryptocurrency. Now, that's really interesting because they're actually talking about uh, the SEC naming, you know, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, right? And, you know, they're actually saying, you know, they, they you know, the SEC named us that we're aiding and abetting the company's unregistered sales of the XRP cryptocurrency. And, you know, you know, from their perspective, they said, you know, we're not selling unregulated cryptocurrency. You've been coming to, you know, Ripple uh, to see us for the last two and a half years. You know, you know, you know what we've been doing. You know, you've seen two and a half years of documents already, um, you know, and, you know, you've never told us anything like, you know, hey, it, it is a security. So, you know, this is what they're arguing, right, which is fair enough, I think. And they also said that, you know, most of the XRP that's been sold has been sold overseas, not in the USA. And also Ripple retorted back to the SEC in these two uh, dismissals. Um, you know, you basically, you know, have never even looked at a US dollar transaction that was actually supposed, you know, that was committed in the US as securities fraud, you know, because it wasn't you didn't get a prospectus and all this sort of thing, right? So, you know, Ripple have gone back and said to the um, SEC, you, you, you were in, on our, in our premises, you know, for over two and a half years and basically you never looked at a US dollar transaction. And, you know, touche. I mean, that is just genius by the lawyers, okay? And then also on top of that, I hope this makes sense. Let me have a glass of water first. Right, I know there's a lot to take in here, but this is absolute genius. Seriously, ah, oh, that's better. So also, right, they can The lawyer, Ripple's lawyer, then said, um, the SEC. Now he, this is what what he said, right? The SEC are violating Section Five of the status of, of limitations, right? Um, and should be rejected since the SEC failed to prove that the Ripple executives were knowingly breaking uh, the securities law by selling uh, tokens, right? And then they said, you know, you guys, the SEC, have come to our premises over the last two and a half years and have never told us, you know, that, that we're violating the law or anything like this, right? And apparently, this is where it's, the Ripple's lawyers are, like, incredible. Um, apparently, under the statutes of limitations, if someone's been, you know, pursuing you and looking into your files and all this sort of thing for two and a half years, you can't keep pursuing them uh, because, you know, two and a half years is a time limit on the statutes of limitation. And once that time limit goes, it could be a year, you know, then these the, the SEC had no right being there. So that's really interesting. In other words, I don't think, to be put it simply, the SEC, the SEC does not have a leg to stand on, seriously. And that's pretty much why XRP is going up, up, up. So I thought that was just absolutely fascinating. Now, getting back to the Coinbase thing, um, yesterday on FTC, Coinbase actually got up to 594 US dollars, right? Now, on the, the cash for difference markets, Coinbase is at 250 US dollars. So this is going to be interesting because, you know, yesterday on, you know, this the cryptocurrency markets, FTX, which is the exchange, Coinbase got to 594. So, you know, maybe it's that's where it's going in terms of the equity market as well. I mean, but you got to think about it. If if Coinbase got to 594, right? What do you think Binance is worth? I mean, seriously, Binance could be 
2,000 US dollars. Easy. Seriously, easy. Also, another big story I had yesterday, very quickly, and then I'll talk about the news today. Uh, European Investment Bank um, are poised to deploy blockchain for their bond sales. Now, this is huge because I was in the fixed interest market and in the bond market, right? And this is huge. This is the European Investment Bank, which is a high-profile European bank, which is huge, right? They've hired Banco Santando SA. Now, Banco Santando is a client, a direct client of Ripple's, and they're using XRP. So this is a really big story, right? And, you know... So it means the European Investment Bank via Bank Santander will be using XRP to settle and to settle bonds, right? And to register bonds and also for custody. This is huge. Okay, so uh, you know, that is unbelievable. And I'm gonna keep an eye on that story because Fed Income that is really, really big. Um yeah, there was look. There was a lot of other stuff to announce to you guys. I mean, check out CRO. Um, there's the this fin, Finex flow. This is the world's first hybrid DeFi CFI liquidity aggregator. Announced its partnership with Crypto.com. Now, you know I'm invested in CRO, and this is it, right? This is huge, right? Because this is going to make uh, provide so much more liquidity for Crow because they're an exchange, more clients, you know, more traders, huge more volume. I mean, you know, CRO should not be at twenty two cents, right? I mean, that story is absolutely huge, right? Uh, also, Orin Protocol um, uh, to implement Polkadot into Orin Terminal, right? For for potentially integrating with uh, Cardano and Ethereum as well. Now, that is huge, right? Seriously, and that, that's really big for Polkadot. Also, you know, they're, they're going to be a liquidity provider to Polkadot for swaps, right? So, you know, we're, we're actually, you know, my clients, we're all in the, the exact right investments here, you know, in our investment portfolios. I mean, that is absolutely huge, right? And that was from yesterday as well, right? But there was just so many other important stories. Why? Right? Another one, right? Uh, for Bernard's, right? Bernard's a smart chain. And this is all the stuff that we've got in our investment portfolios, right? Uh, WowSwap launched on Bernard's smart chain, right? And it's a, basically a, de a DX, a decentralized exchange from Korea, that, you know, does derivatives and swaps and everything else. And it's a liquidity provider where you can get margin, you know, five times 10 or whatever, right? But the thing is, this WOW swap, right, from Korea, South Korea, is actually an exchange itself, right? So this exchange is using Binance's smart chain. So the exchange is an exchange on Binance, right? I mean, that's massive. I mean, this is what Binance is doing, right? Binance is not just an exchange, but it's a now it's a liquidity provider. It lends out money. It's like a bank, but more, right? I mean, it's just unbelievable, seriously. Uh, and it does 70% of the volume in the market. My God, this story is huge. And I really, you know, and this just tells me, Bonanza CEO, um, Chang, what is it, Chang? I always forget his name. I've got to think about it now. Chang Payo Zhang. Is that the right? Yeah, it's, they call him CZ for short, but I always forget his name. I try. Chang Pang, Pang Zao. That's it. That guy is a genius. I'm not kidding. You know, seriously. I mean, what do you think Binance is going to... If Binance goes to the equity market next year, seriously, I mean, they'd go on the equity market three times or four times bigger than, you know, Coinbase or more, Right. You know, they'd be worth a fortune. Just, you know, wherever Coinbase's uh, share price is, multiply it by four, literally. Seriously, uh, that guy, it just tells me that guy is seriously an absolute genius. So they were the, I just wanted to tell you those stories because they were some of the really important stories from yesterday. And I didn't want you to miss out because, uh, you know, I mean, it's important to keep up, right? But also yesterday, I also want to mention something else very quickly, right? Uh, the, now, this was real. I found this one really weird, I have to say. 
Uh, v Chain and Salesforce, of all people, have linked up together in a partnership, right? And that is the weirdest link up I've ever heard, right? I know, I know Salesforce because I've used their their sales. When you're on the sales side, you've got to do all your, you know, updating your notes and everything. So I know Salesforce really well. But V Chain, which is a supply chain management company, it just doesn't make sense to me. That's the weirdest, you know, tie up I've ever, ever heard. Really. <laughs> anyway, just thought I'd mention that. But those were the main stories from yesterday. I just uh, and then I'll then I'll sorry I'm going on because I don't I don't want you to miss anything. But it, let me just check something else here, guys and girls. Oh yes, sorry. Um, also, US, US CPI came out yesterday. Now, don't believe these figures. Okay, they report that there are two point six percent, and they're expecting two point five. And it basically, you know, confirmed that inflation's going up, but. Not much. According to the Fed, if you believe this, these stats, which I don't, let me just have a glass of water. I don't believe these stats for a minute. Um, they're saying that the price of goods and the services and everything else, the cost of living, doesn't go up by more than 2% a year, which, you know, that these people must be on drugs, fed income. Honestly... You know, inflation is running at about 35% per annum. And they must think that we're all a bunch of, you know, dickheads or nogs or something because, you know, they must think that we're all dumb, seriously. You know, those figures are absolute garbology, I have to tell you. Anyway, I, I was just amazed because, you know, it just tells me the Fed's going to keep ploughing money the into the system. The oh, sorry, that's my uh, live voice squawk, squawk, sorry, because, you know, I trade. It, you know, it just tells me the US Fed is going to keep ploughing money into the system because they think inflation's only at 2.6%, right? And we all know, because we live in the real world, not like these people that live up in the ivory towers, we all know that on the ground, you know, inflation's at 35%. So, you know, these guys, we have to use this as a huge, huge advantage, right? It's very simple, they keep putting money into the system. There's so much money getting put into the system because they just keep writing more checks for US dollars, right? And that's the problem. When they do that, the US dollar goes down, right? Because you keep selling more US dollars, right? Because the Fed keeps writing the checks because they think inflation's only at 2.6%, right? So we all know different to that. And so we just use all this free money because the interest rates are really low because they think inflation is very low. And then you know what happens? The risk markets go through the roof. You know, this is literally a free call option. You know, what I mean is you've got the Fed underneath your call option and the risk is so limited because the Fed is standing underneath you, right? That's pretty much it. Uh, this is the time for people to make a fortune. Seriously, on the cryptocurrency market, a fortune. I mean, equity markets are going to go, go higher and higher as well. And so is crypto. Absolutely, all the risk assets will go higher. Property will go higher. You know, all the physical assets. The only one that surprises me at the moment is gold. I still cannot get my head around why gold is still only at $17.45 US and silver's only at $25.62. You know, I, I just cannot get my head around that. Seriously, uh, those two, um, you know, commodities are going to have, will move soon. I'm telling you right now because, you know, with, with this sort of inflation that we're talking about and we see it within the purchasing manager indexes and everything else, right? This inflation is, is not 2.6%, right? And, you know, inflation's 30-odd percent. Now, gold should be, golly, 3,600 USD for 31 grams, not 17.45, right? It's just a joke. And silver's too cheap, right? But the only other thing that's going up is oil, right? Oil's at $64.67, 
you know, and I know they might be a bit concerned about this Iranian thing, right, with missiles and, you know, the uranium deal. They're trying to get the Iranians to pull back on their, you know, nuclear testing and all this sort of business, right? Uh, and and your, Iran's come back and said, look, you know, Iran said, warn, you know, they came back and said, warns the USA, not much time to save the uranium deal. So the Iranians are being very provocative at the moment and quite aggressive, which when, you know, then the US not quite sure, you know, what's why they're being so aggressive, right? So I think that one, that is certainly one to keep an eye on because the Iranians, uh, yeah, it's a very... In, just keep an eye on that story because uh, I'm sure that's why oil is going up, you know, as much as it is, uh, for sure. And interestingly enough, uh, the the uh, 10-year bond rate in the US is coming down. It was um, about 1.66 the other day, and now it's down to 1.63%, right? And you can see what's happening here. You know, the Fed are driving back down that 10-year bond yield, right, in the US, because the mortgage payers in the US are very sensitive to their 30 year mortgage going over 3%, right? And currently at the moment, it, it is 3.027%, right? Uh, they call it something like a mortgage rate uh, app, app rate or something like that. But it, it came out this morning at 3.027%. 3 so under three is, is great, but if, if it's over three, you know, uh, apparently the American consumer that has to pay their mortgage really, really struggles. So, you know, and that's why I keep such a close eye on that 10-year bond rate uh, in the US, right? Uh, the yield rate. Mm. Interesting, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, all markets basically are all connected and they're just absolutely fascinating. Now let's let's quickly get to everything else that we talk about. Golly, I'm sorry, I had a lot to talk about today. Okay, market cap two point two six eight trill. Uh, volumes one. Oh wow, one four. Wow, nearly one hundred and fifty billion. Liquidity is four point two five billion. Bitcoin dominance is fifty two point eight nine percent. Now that is going down, and as I've spoken about before, I believe that thing will go down to forty five percent minimum and then 35%. That's where it's heading, which means Pacific altcoins are going to do really, really well, okay? Uh, and, I, you know, the way my our portfolios are going, my clients' portfolios and my portfolios, we're doing extremely well because we're just so well set up, uh, you know, according to, you know, how professional managers uh, do their portfolios because I was one. But um, yeah, look, it's going really well. Anyway, let's uh, let's talk about the next one, right? Now, um, real volume uh, in US dollar tether was forty six bill, Bitcoin was ten point nine bill, XRP was nine point five bill. Wow, that's huge. Dogecoin, that's huge for Dogecoin. Nine bill. Wow. Ethereum six point five two bill. Binance US six point four five bill. Binance itself. 4.03 bill. Wow, ADA, 3.24 bill. Tell you what, there's some huge licks going through the market at the moment. Seriously, no wonder it's going up. Unbelievable, seriously. And I mean, Bitcoin, what, got to a new high of 64,854. And currently it's at 6411. Well, no, it's going up again. 64164. I mean, just unbelievable. Seriously, this market, new people are coming in all the time and buying the cryptocurrencies. And I can't understand, like I said the other day, I cannot understand for the life of me why someone would be short, you know, Bitcoin or, or you know, short futures on any of the crypto, you know, say top 20. Because, you know, this market is going up. You know, it's so structural to me. I mean, think about it really simply. You've got the Fed plowing money into the system. Money, 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 money everywhere, sloshing into the system. People are not going to put it in the bank, right? Because you're going to earn negative, you know, 1%, you know, just for having it there. Negative 15%, right? Or 25% because of inflation, 
So your money is just going to deteriorate by 25%, right? No one's going to do that. They're not going to put their money in the bank, right? That's a fact. So what do they do? They look for risk markets that give them a high return. And honestly, they will, they'll all come to the crypto market because the crypto market gives you the highest return of anything. And that's exactly what will happen. And, you know, also you've got to remember there's only 107 million people invested in crypto in the whole world, you know, which is 7.8 billion, right, or 7.7 .7 billion. You know, I mean, this market hasn't even started. You know, you hear silly people saying, uh, oh, you know, it's seasonal and, you know, according to my market cycles, it should be coming down by now. And I'm going, get real. You haven't even worked in markets, man, by saying that. You know, some of the oldest markets like Amsterdam, the stock exchange was set up the first, Amsterdam was actually the first place where the stock exchange was set up in the world, right? In 1600s, right? 1600s, the stock exchange was set up in Amsterdam. You know, you can, and, you know, I said to this guy, right, you can get, you know, well over 150 years of data you know, for the stock exchange, you know, stock exchange has been around forever, right? You can get the bond market, you know, for a hundred years, you know, you know, and, and what I said to him is you need a cycle longer than 10 years, right? An economic cycle for any product, right? Yield product or currency or whatever, right? An economic cycle, right? You know, how can you say cryptocurrency is in an economic cycle when it's only been around since 2008? You know, that's just a stupid argument, right? Completely. You know, you cannot look at the cryptocurrency market in terms of, you know, seasonal or economic cycles. You know, the time span, the history that has been around is too short, you know, completely nuts. You know, and my point is, Right. My point is, there's no supply in the cryptocurrency market. You know, once the 21 million of Bitcoin goes, that's it. You know, you can't print any more. You know, the only thing you can do is tokenize it, which is probably what will happen. But that'll make your Bitcoin that you bought even more valuable because, you know, there's no supply of the real Bitcoin, if you know what I'm saying, right? Or there's no supply of Tron left, or there's no supply supply of Binance any left. That's to me, it's a no brainer what's going to happen, right? Your crypto assets, the specific crypto assets that you buy, you hold forever because they're going to be incredibly valuable. You know, if you want cash, you you do what Binance CEO does, Chang Pang Zao. Oh, I got it right this time, and you basically just borrow against your crypto. Because it's the cheapest thing to do, right? Cash is cheap. This is how people become billionaires, you know? And that's what Chang Zhang does. He never sells his crypto, ever. You know, this is rare stuff. It's like you're selling a black opal from Australia. You never sell your specific crypto, ever. I mean, it is a gold mine. What else can I say? An absolute gold mine. Anyway, look... Um, I think I'll have to stop there because really uh, this gets longer and longer. Um, but there was stuff I wanted to really tell you, I have to say. Um, oh, look, you can turn off if you don't want to. Um, just this will be a long one because it's a catch up, you know. Mm. If you're bored, guys and girls, you can turn off now. But, but I just wanted to get through a lot of stuff. Um, the equity market last night was just full bull, right? They were buying all the technology stocks. They could buy. They were buying anything. So, you know this Coinbase thing is. I reckon it's going to be so bull. It is not funny, right? So bull. It's going to be an absolute joke. So, you know, keep watch that. Watch it with the Bernard story. But also stuff I wanted to go through. Um, Ox, which we have, they did their live uh, mainnet, which is great for them. Um, XRP, obviously, the the legal victory they had. Now, there's relisting rumours, which is, you know, great for them, right? 
Coinbase is the big story, obviously, with Binance, the price of where Coinbase, coin is going to trade, obviously, to where Binance is going to be. That's something I'm seriously looking at, right? Because Fed income, uh, you know, Coinbase have issued 114.9 million registered shares. And as I said, the IPO, the, you know, obviously, it's listed and it's supposed to open up at 250. But I tell you what, this thing will like triple Fed income. It could, could do anything. Because as I said, it got on F FTX yesterday and it got to 594 US, right? So who knows, right? Coinbase were, you know, um, generous enough to give their 1,700 staff 100 free shares, which is $25,000 if the, coin, if the uh, coin shares get to, uh, you know, well, start at 250. But it'll be worth more than that, right? So, you know, they reckon it's going to open about 340. So that'll be... That'll be very interesting, okay? Now, Bitcoin, as I said, got to a high of 64854. Ripple's like up 87% for the whole week. Dodge was up 83%. Wow, that's amazing. Also, Kraken apparently is going to IPO this year. Also, you've got Boffy. Uh, I, I, sorry, um, not Boffy. What's it called? Uh, Block, Block, FI, IPOing, eToro, Robin Hood, NFT investment, backed. Gemini, and maybe even Binance, right? Now, that's going to put even more money in the stock market, and then it's going to come back to the crypto market. So that's that's bull. That is huge bull to me, Fed income. I'm not kidding. Also, Shenan Bank, now part of Hedera Governing Ch Council, which, uh, you know, Shenan Bank is the largest South Korean bank, you know, one of the large, well, it is the largest in South Korea. Wow. I mean, that's starting to give credibility to hash. Hashadera, but look, I still don't like Hashadera. I don't know. I don't know why. But you know, this uh, Shenanan Bank, four four seven eight point five billion in in assets. Wow, it's it's a big bank. Fed income, it really is. Oh my, yeah, I just can't get my head around Hashadera. Seriously, there's just something about it I don't like. Um, Tron TRC twenty uh, versus Ethereum is now doing more more than Ethereum, right? So not only is Bernard's killing uh, Ethereum, so is Tron. I mean, you know, Tron started last year and they're, they're killing Ethereum. That's really interesting, I thought. Now, another opportunity I've got to tell you, okay, and this is something, this is how I think. And I'll give you a clue to how I think, okay. Mm. Sorry, guys and girls, it is long, but it's just a catch up. Right, this is what I read today. And this is exactly how I think. And there's an opportunity here. Polkadot and Cosmos uh, connect as Plasma, Plasm and Secret Network release bridge MVP. And this bridge is an interoperability bridge to connect the two ecosystems. In other words, Polkadot and Cosmos together... Uh, they each have separate ecosystems and separate networks, and they've worked on a bridge of technology between one to the other, which is, which is like an interoperability or like a, a, a bridge, right, you know, to connect both systems together, okay? So they become one. Now, that is fascinating, and, you know... These two ecosystems become one, right? Think about that. So you've got Polkadot and Cosmos now together. Now, this is where the value comes, and I'm thinking, right, what's what's the price of Polkadot? Well, the price of Polkadot is forty two fifty nine, right? Forty two dollars and fifty nine cents. And what what's the price of Cosmos? Price of Cosmos is twenty four dollars and thirty eight cents. And you know what I immediately say to myself? by Cosmos, okay, Atom Cosmos, because if they become one, the, the two together are going to have a higher price than Polkadot at forty two fifty nine, right? Yeah? So together, you'd assume the price is going to be, you know, together, not, not, it, not the 42 and the 24 together, there's going to be synergy. So take away the synergy, you know, to, so that would be you've got 66 together, but there is synergy. So you have to take away, say, six 
for Synergy, right? So that leaves 60 mil, uh, $60 as I should say, $60, right? And um, and then sort of other people getting really upset and people leaving and bad performance. So, so $18, right? Leaves it with 18 bucks. So $18 plus 24, 18 plus 24, my head doesn't work that well sometimes. What's that? 18, what did I say? 18, 24, 12, uh, oh man, I'm a ter I have to write it down. This is terrible. I'm really sorry. 1824. Mm -hmm. And polka dots price, right? So eight and four is two. Carry it. Yep. Four, six, right? Yep. Two. Okay, so you know what it tells you is it's gonna be no, it's gonna be eighteen twenty-four over plus forty-two fifty-nine. Sorry. Bear with me, guys. I'm I'm thinking out loud here. I'm getting it wrong. So no, it'll be polka dots price fourteen five nine plus eighteen twenty four. Okay, that's right. And then you take it down. Yep, I get that now. Okay, sorry guys, this is that what I was saying was wrong. Um. So you get come up with a price of sixty eight three, and then you take off six for synergy. Uh, disgruntled men. Or whatever because people will be upset so may, maybe eight of that and you come up with a very rough on the back of a, an envelope valuation right of where cosmos or dot should be right with them both together and i'm saying 60 less six what's that 54 so 52 bucks i'm saying these two together Dot and Cosmos, because now there's interoperability, should be worth 50 bucks. So my decision now is to buy Cosmos, Cosmos just simply on a valuation basis, okay? I love Cosmos. It's in our investment portfolio. I love it a lot, uh, you know, but this even tells me more that it's more valuable, than what we thought yesterday, right? So it's in our investment portfolio, so it's already got a great sharp ratio of over three or four or five, at least. But because of this happening as well, this is going to add value to Cosmos, and it's cheap. Seriously, cheap, cheap, cheap. Because, it, as I said, the price is going to go to 50 bucks, right? You know, so what an, what an investment. So cheap, cheap, cheap as chips, guys and girls. Anyway, um, very quickly, um, the social media, Dodge, VeChain, uh, Ada, Link, Hashadera, XRP, Worldwide, we saw uh, Binance, XRP, Hashadera, Index Finance, Dogecoin, Coin, of course, and Thor, right? Uh, also, Google involved in N NFTs now with Origin E commercial platform. Amazing. <laughs> Everyone's getting into NFTs. Just incredible, guys and girls. What else can I say? Um, incredible. Anyway, guys, uh, I think that's enough for the day. I'll talk to you all tomorrow. And sorry for going on so long today, but it was a long catch-up. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Bye for now.